Hi there guys, um, we're going to start off by uh, taking this question and seeing exactly what it wants from us. Uh, you might notice on the bottom right hand corner we've got a, a scale of 1 is to 2 and just above it I've written 1 is to 1. The question wants us to draw the casting according to a scale 1 is to 1. So what does this mean? So I've preempted uh, this uh, question a little bit and I've gone ahead and I've doubled up on all the actual measurements. You'll see every dimension over here given. Um, has been doubled up on. Now, why did I do that? Well, your initial drawing was going to give us some dimensions. So let's take, for instance, this measurement over here, this 10 millimeters over here. If this 10 millimeters is already at a scale of 1 is to 2, that means it is ha at half of uh, what it needs to be. Okay, now remember, if I'm saying 1 is to 2, what I'm actually saying is for every one unit of measurement that I'm going to be drawing, it will represent two. So what they've done is, for every one unit of measurement that they have drawn over here, it actually represents double it, two of it. Okay, so what we need to do is, we need to take it back to a scale of one is to one, which means I'm going to now draw what I see. Okay, for every one unit of measurement that I'm going to be drawing, needs to represent the actual unit which is exactly uh, the same. Okay, so which means every one of these uh, measurements or dimensions over here will now need to have uh, it doubled. Now let's quickly just m make sure that we can figure out what the actual length is and what the actual height is. I've already gone ahead and I've added them all up nicely for you but I want to explain to you guys how I went about it. So on the left hand side we have a radius of 40 there we have it over there. This arrow is pointing out at this arc that is drawn over here. So if it has a radius of 40, I know that from this portion over here to the middle of the circle uh, will be 40. Okay, so that's a little bit of information that we have now. We have the first 40, and then we move along. We know that the distance from here to here, as they had at 1 is to 2, which was 18, and then I change it at 1 is to 1, which is now 36. So the distance from here to here is an extra 36, so I add that up in my calculator. And then I go ahead and I go see, well hang on, they tell me from here to here is another 51, which is converted to 102, I add 102 there. And I don't really know this distance yet, I've written that distance over there. Okay, I don't know that distance before I get to this distance, which is my 40. So I have a distance over here that is unaccounted for. I know that this is going to be converted to 120. So if I have a distance from here all the way across to there of 120, and I know the distance from there all the way to here, which is only to this point over here, then I can simply take the 120 minus the 102, which will give me the remainder of 18. Okay, so sometimes we'll have to think out the box and um, go and find those measurements for ourselves. Then the further... 20 millimeters, which is converted to 40, so I add 40 to my calculator, which will give me a total of 236 millimeters. The height, however, very easy. I know that the entire height is going to go from this point to that point, which is my 86. The 43 converted to 86 because of my scale 1 is to 1. Okay, guys, so that was very easy. Once I've got that now, I go ahead and I go and construct the, the, the box in which this thing is going to fit. So that whole shape over there is going to fit inside of a box. And the next portion over here, when I move across to my workpiece, or my drawing board, um, you'll then see uh, why I have uh, drawn it inside of a box. All right, so let's move on. All right, guys, we're going to move across to the drawing page. What I've already preempted was uh, the fact that you guys would have to have a box drawn. Um, please note that the box that I have over here starts there, goes down all the way. This is going to be the one with the length of uh, 236 millimeters and a height of 86 millimeters. What I have done is I've gone and subdivided my box into the necessary areas. If you look at your drawing, you'll note that there was going to be a 40 millimeter radius over here there was going to be a 36 millimeter further a length in line which was going to be six millimeters above the bottom end of the box okay and i'll explain that to you guys as we go along and then we would have a further section of 102 millimeters another 18 which gave us that 120 
uh, millimeters that you guys dealt with. Okay. And then we had a 40 millimeter distance right through to the end. Okay. And then our heights subdivided were uh, 20 millimeters and then the 40 millimeters. So I've gone ahead and constructed it. And I've constructed these two lines right across like so. Um, because if you look at your drawing, um, you'll note that there um, are other uh, dimensions that are needed uh, that we're going to assume is part of our drawing. So now that I have uh, subdivided it, okay, note that I have written those lengths and heights uh, down below over here. Um, I've also included the center lines. Um, remember that your center line was 40 millimeters away, then you can go and include those center lines and so long. Um, it will then, from this line that is 6 millimeters above the bottom, remember we had an 86 height over there, okay, and of which we had a radius arc of 40, which means from this 6 millimeter over here, we have 80 from here all the way to the top. And what's half of 80 is the radius of 40. Okay, and we'll ma be making use of that. I needed to find this point over here where these two center lines intersect because I'm going to be putting my compass point on there opening it up to 40 millimeters and then scribing an arc from over here all around to there to right through to here okay so let's look at the basic things the things that i can see those are the things i need to go ahead and go and start drawing so because i have my box here already i know that at the bottom over here i can simply go ahead and draw the 120 millimeters of solid line that i have at the bottom so there i start filling my brain with a bit of information as to what this thing's going to actually start looking at like. I have that 20 millimeters that I have that goes up from there. Remember we uh, changed everything from a scale 1 is to 2 to a scale 1 is to 1. And we're going to have to print that in there as well. Please guys, you'll always have to go ahead and print the title and the scale as instructed as well. You'll see the second point that says print the title and scale and the space provided. Okay, and the space provided is generally given, but I'm going to say right now you guys will need to put it down below over here. Okay, and we're going to continue. I'm going to simply, by having drawn the parameters of each shape and subdividing the box into the specific uh, lengths, it makes my life a whole lot easier when uh, drawing this actual shape. Because all I'm doing now is I'm drawing the skeleton of it within a frame. Uh, it makes my life a uh, whole lot easier now you'll note that that portion over there that's being cut away I'm going to draw that up there like so this is that portion over there that we had that 18 millimeters that's been cut away all right and we're going to continue but now in this case over here we're going to continue a little bit further we're going to continue all the way to the center line on the other side because it's a straight line it goes to a tangent of my arc isn't it okay so there we go all right and we also know that we got this guy over here it's going to be a nice straight line it's going to form a tangent to the arc over here and i'm going to go ahead and complete this guy over here which is also going to go all the way to the top very easy manipulate my pencil a little bit there okay and um, there we have it now I have to go and fill in all the little bits and pieces on the inside. Uh, that's going to be interesting. Let's go open up our compass to 40. I've already done so, so I'm going to literally just put it. Let's quickly have a look here. If I had this over here, that would be my, it's a little bit bigger than 40. Let's, let's see. There we go. And I'm going to put it on my intersecting point. Let's make sure that it touches on this side here. Before I draw, I'll go make sure whether my drawing is accurate or not. Uh, in this case here, it seems to be a slightly inaccurate. It does, however, go through a specific point over there. Okay, which seems to be very accurate. It could also be the tools that I'm using that slightly shift. We all have that predicament. Um, so I'm going to simply carry on. For the purpose of this video, we're just going to carry on like so, even though we have a slight inaccuracy, um, as I'm going to point out to you right over here now these are the things that you're going to run into um, what you need to do is make sure that you might have to work from left to right and complete your drawing as such so that you know that when you have drawn the actual um, arc that whatever you're going to be drawing further and attached to the arc is going to end up from that point or start up from that point 
to where it needs to go. All right, that way you won't uh, indicate or um, show that you have inaccuracies. Okay, but nevertheless, we are going to move on. We also have a radius of, um, no, a diameter of 40, which means that's a radius of 20 to work with. So we're going to simply place that on and open up to 20. So we're going to place it on top of here in the same little spot, and we're going to lean into the curve. Please note I'm using my compass from the top there, you can see it there, and I am simply twisting it between my fingers, okay, there like so, to get that final answer over there. Right guys, now the marks are already starting to stream in, we note that we also have a, a diameter of 40 um, when we are dealing with the hole over here. So if we have a 40, we need to go ahead and go and place 20 on this side over here and 20 on this side over here. And like I said to you guys, we already had some measurements on the side over here, which is 40 and 20, and they haven't given us the depths over here. So I'm going to assume these depths are going to be in line with the measurements that I have over here. So that makes it very easy for me now. I can go ahead and go and draw from my 20 like so, remember this is your sectioned or your half sectioned area and then from on this side of the line over here you can see everything is going to be sectioned and everything on this side of the line is going to have hidden detail which means that half over there is the half that is actually being cut into it's actually being sectioned okay once it's cut you need to show the cut surfaces which means if this is a hole and I'm cutting through it with a knife the knife won't touch anything in this area here because it will be in mid-air. But when it goes through this portion over here, it will start touching metal, which means I have to then start showing those surfaces as being cut. Right, we're going to carry on and we're going to find out But that portion over here that we have the second width over here of the second portion of the hole has got a width of uh, a diameter of 64. We now know that because they're giving us diameter signs that these are circular in shape. So they're cylindrical. So we have a cylindrical hole over here of 64. What is half of 64? Let's go and put it to a zero. What's half of 64 is 32 um, because we doubled everything up. So I'm going to go to 32 on this side here. Note that I've used this line over here. One, two, three, 32 and I'm going to go ahead and draw my line from this point onward to the line now the one thing that the drawing has done is they've continued this line th uh, straight through past this I'm going to leave a little gap showing that there is a difference I'm not going to be linking my hidden detail line with the existing line Okay, and we also realize that we need to finish off this initial hole. It's also in hidden detail, this portion that we can't see. Remember, we're on the left-hand side of the, um, the center line. Please note, uh, just a little tip on center lines. Uh, start where the hole starts and finish off where that hole is meant to finish. Don't finish off just before the time. Don't leave a space over here. Finish off where it's meant to be finishing off. Okay. And on this side over here, on the right hand side of my center line, yet again, I'm going to go ahead and go and finish off that width of the hole. And I'm going to do the same with this side. On the left hand side of this center line, we have everything that's not cut. So I'm simply going to continue my, my hidden detail line. like so and I'm going to bring in my t-square I'm going to have hidden detail going right through down to there I'm going to leave a little space and then this guy will go all the way there as instructed by the actual drawing and then we have the parameter that we need to adhere to of 84 the next one is going to be a diameter of 84 so I'm just going to simply go um, measure off we got 84 which is 42 on either side so i'm going go there and then we have 84 which is going to be there okay yeah that works out 
Okay, I'm going to then go ahead, link up the necessary points to one another. Like so. And this one here, which is the sectioned portion, which is the cut portion, I'm going to just simply link with a straight line because I'll actually be able to see those things. Okay. Um, so there we have our surface that we're going to be sectioning. Well, there's one more little line here. I see that they've actually connected this portion over here. So let's try and blend this line in as best we can with that guy over there. Okay, and um, then we're going to go and section this surface. So what's actually happening here is the portion that my knife is actually being cut through is touching this, this surface over here, the sectioned surface. How do we section? Well, I'll give you a little trick. With a 45 degree line, you'll note that I have the longer line and a shorter line, the, the, the 10 millimeter line and the 5 millimeter line. For every 5 millimeters between the 10 millimeter lines, um, I have a shorter line. Now, you can either use that one or you can use the, the 10 millimeter line, but I like to use the 5 millimeter line um, and I use that from side to side there. And as I shift it along, I use the length over there and I have an equal interval every time I draw it. So I'm just shifting it along my T-square at 45 degrees and I'll continue doing it like so as you can see over there and that's going to give me my sectioning. So I'm just going to do a couple of those um, and, but for your case you'll have to go right through the actual shape and perhaps I'll go through the actual shape. It's going quick enough. Please remind yourself that you need to give me a good line work and also please give yourself good line tone. Okay, line tone meaning that you obviously have the same um, darkness of line so that you can distinguish or the, the marker for, uh, for, for reading it or the reader, the guy who's going to be graphically reading this information knows exactly what kind of line you're drawing and what kind of a message you're trying to, to pass along to the guy who's going to be reading this uh, information. Remember, you don't, you're not saying anything in words, you're drawing pictures. So lines and line quality, printing, all those kind of things are very, very important. That's why um, I do not extend an existing line into a hidden detail line, because that's graphically communicating something very, very different to what is actually instructed for us to do. Okay, so here we go. We've managed to quickly and efficiently um, section this area over here. This doesn't warrant me uh, putting in a little bit of a, a line there. It'll probably just mess up that little corner. So I'm going to leave it as so. All right, guys. So just to go over this again, you'll notice that I've ma now managed to cover this uh, area very easily. Um, they did demand of us to go from a scale of 1 is to 2 to 1 is to 1. This here, however, now we'll need to have a printing. Now you'll do this between four millimeter guidelines, but I'm going to just simply put your scale and you're going to stipulate there one representing one because that is what has happened. You've doubled up on all your dimensions on the actual question given to you and they want you to go and print the title and the title of this one was a casting. All right. So you'll then go put it in here, either there just above it rather casting in between four millimeter guidelines okay right guys just remember that this is in standard with the sans 10111 um, they also want you to draw the, uh, the orthographic symbol but I'll give you that in a separate video guys I hope you enjoyed this video it was very very straightforward um, and I hope you guys understand how we do work with scale